Shalom. We're doing tonight the the Raga Trevor, our second session on the Raga Trevor, uh, in the series on, on the Rabbanim of Devinsk, Rabbi Simcha and Rav Yosef Rose and the Raga Trevor Gon. Um, today, we'll be, we'll be discussing five unique characteristics of the Raga Trevor Gon. Last time we did uh, civil marriage, and God willing, next time I'd like to do something uh, from his um, from the collected uh, teachings of the Rogat Shavar on Chumash, something to get it connected with Parashat Shavua uh, or something else in the Chumash. And uh, today I'd like to focus on, on the biography in a way that we understand why the Rogat Shavar was so unique. Now, the, the source, there's, there's all sorts of biographical material out there. I'm, I'm relying on two things. Number one, Rav Shlomo Yosef Zevin, who, um, who himself interacted with the Rugged Trevor and, uh, and uh, wrote a, a, uh, a very um, illuminating sefer called Ishim Veshitot, which is uh, where he discusses a number of the great Talmud of, uh, of his generation. Uh, they include the Ragachov, Rab Chaim Brisker, Rab Meir Simcha, Rab Cook, um, uh, a number of others, and um, and the second is one of the uh, there's 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 stuff being printed and stuff and material that's being worked on. There are three volumes put out called uh, Tzafnas Paneach Achadashos, which is uh, which is coming out of Modi'in Elite here in Israel. And uh, in one of their edition, in one of their volumes, so they have a they have a biography. What I like it is everything is everything is quotes from sources. Now, just the brass tacks, um, the Rogachover is called after the place he was born, Rogachov in Belarus, which was not so far away from Homo. Uh, <clears throat> the in the big cities in Belarus are Minsk. Uh, Homel, uh, I think Babroisk, uh, and um, and uh, it was an area where there were a lot of Lubavitcher Hasidim, um, and uh, sure enough, his his father, Reb Fischel, was a uh, was a Lamdan and a Hasid of the Tzemach Tzedek. Uh, I I did not find much about his mother, uh, other than her name was Sarah. The um, now. Like many of the people that we've been dealing with, the Ragachover uh, at, at an extremely young age was known as an Eloi, um, known as somebody who was who was uh, who was a genius. Usually, this took two uh, expressed itself in two ways. Number one, uh, oh wait a second, um, my mistake. Just a moment. I usually like to share this with the participants so you can see the you can see it uh, yourselves. Shalom aleichem, everybody. I'm just going to share the PDF, the uh, the uh, PowerPoint with everybody. There we are. Um, Um, the um, right, so so um, the the rugged shover as as an extremely uh, young boy uh, outgrew the teachers in his town, and there are wondrous things said about him. You know, at this age he knew. Uh, you know, Tanakh in this age he was uh, he knew the Zikin in this age, etc. So so he was uh he was extremely uh extremely um it, it's it's not enough to say an extremely bright child. He was he was this unique phenomenon. So his father took him to the Beis Halevi, uh uh who who was one of the greatest you know Talmud of his era. 
And he learned there uh, for a year with a chavrusa with Reb Chaim Brisker, uh, who was the son of the Beis Halevi. And then uh, eventually went to Rabbi Sholeib Diskin Zetzal in Shklov, uh, and he learned there for another year. Um, now, he married uh, uh, the daughter Rivka, the daughter of uh, Moshe Yehuda Gorfinkel uh, Zal of Warsaw. Now, she passed away a year later, and then he married the sister Peril. So the two daughters, uh, Rachel and Hannah, that we know about, so uh, both were both married married Rabbanim. Uh, one married the uh, the uh, the Rav of Petach, somebody who became the Rav of Petach Tikva. Another one, Chano, uh, um, married um, uh, a, a Rav Abba David Goldfein. That's how he became a Rav in Moscow. Now this this Rachel Citron is extremely important in terms of the uh, history of the Ragachevers writings because. She went to. She went back to Davinsk eventually. She was the one who eventually went back to Davinsk to photograph all of the uh, uh, the material, the writings of the Ragachover, um, and and then send them back to the United States. Send them out to the United States from there, and then. Uh, she tragically was was stuck in in Eastern Europe and died in the Holocaust, was killed. Um, now, how did the Ragachev become, the Ragachev become associated with Dvinsk? So for the first, uh, uh, I think it was like eight years of their marriage, he was just learning uh, and was supported by the father-in-law. But the, uh, uh, the grandson of the Tzemech Tzedek, who was called the Admar of Kapust, so he, uh, encouraged the Ragachev when the position of the rabbinate in Dvinsk, the Hasidic community rabbinate in Dvinsk, uh, opened up. So he was he encouraged him to take it, and he was accepted as the Rav in in uh, in Dvinsk. Um, so and he stayed there for his whole life. He stayed there. You see, if you do the arithmetic, so he became Rav in in 1888, and he was there until 1936. Uh, except for a brief period when he was the Rav in Petterberg, when the uh, around World War One, so he went into this uh, this um, this exile to run away from the from the Germans, and he had apparently it was not as simple for him there in uh, in uh, Petterberg when we recall to what was uh, Saint Petersburg, uh, Leningrad, but those are the brass tacks of his life. Now, I want to focus on the uniqueness of the Rav Chaver. And these words of Rav Zevin um, are are very poetic, um, but I I uh, I want to just read how he introduces things. Parsha b'fnei atzma sheina nichlalat b'tocha miskeret akvua shel gedolim megoanim ita yishu to atoranit shel agon a rugged shover. The rugged shover is like its own parsha. It's its own unique uh, story, which doesn't fit into the set framework of other gedolim and other ge'onim. Meaning it's not just that it's too big, but rather it's not included in the same, it's, it's, not, the, it's not of the same type. It's not that he was off the charts. He wasn't just off the charts. It's not the amount that he knew, his bikiyas. And it's not the, the amount of depth he had. It's a whole different kind of, of, of thing. He is... He is fashioned out of a different kind of material. He is kneaded from a different dough. This is thought we're talking about a different type of bikiyas, a different type of thinking, a different type of, of, uh, of, uh, of commentary on the sources. 
Abne Dore Doro Dorenu, El Af Albane Kama Dorot Kodmi. Meaning his Bakias, his his mastery of the sources of the of the um, of the rabbinic literature was not just above the rest of his generation, but it was it was above the rest of several generations. When you start learning his your your head starts to starts to swirl with all of the with all with all of the quotations, with all the have a look here, have a look here, have a look here. The same is true for his for his logical analysis and his commentaries, his unique, his his creative commentaries on sources. And he's unique in terms of the the amount, good point, Ariel. There were those who called him, who spoke about him like that, like that he was that he was like a region. And we'll see, we'll see as we speak on that he's uh, he has that kind of a, of, a, of a character. Um, he was related to in a way like that, but but uh, in a, diff, a little bit of a different one. So uh, it just you, even when you're talking quantitatively. Just so many chakiras and so many new kinds of explanations of the Tanoim and the Amoroim and the early Rishonim. That doesn't define his essence. He's not counted and not measured. You can't weigh him. He's speaking very poetically, but this was the feeling people, his contemporaries had. When you're counting, when you're measuring, when you're weighing, so it's compared to others. He is separate. He's in his own realm. I mean, you can, you can talk, you, you know, like, uh, you know, he, he was a little bit, when you talk about, uh, you know, other gedolim, other achronim, so, so, uh, he had a little greater ma- X had a little greater mastery in the Achronim, and this one knew all the Rishonim, and this one knew knew the Sugis backwards and forwards. And, but with with regards to the rugged Trevor, there was this. It seems to be a unique kind of phenomenon. Tpisa miucheret lo. He had a he had a unique grasp. Ayin miucheret, unique eye. Beofen miuched or He sees in a unique way. Kishu mevin hamon marim akomot. When he brings all of his sources for the things that he's dealing with, it's not only the the great amount of mastery. Even and mainly on the way he looks at things, the kinds of Comparisons and associations between this realm of Allah, this realm of Allah, this sugi and that sugi and this issue and that issue are things that others wouldn't feel. He might see, see, but not feel. The same thing goes for the, how his way of understanding things and his commentaries and his, and his explanations. They all seem to be in this unique kind of um, manner. Um, the and so he he to sum it up again. Rav Zevin, Horgal Nubatori Mugzamim. We have become accustomed to all sorts of exaggerated titles. Ubifrat Beila Abayim Beshat Evel Beshat Yovel. When, when someone, when they're mourning over somebody who passed away, so people speak in superlatives about him, or, or when he uh, reaches a certain, a certain ripe age and they, they come up with a jubilee volume about somebody or they, they speak about his greatness, but is when, they, when they have some, subtle, you know, spell, some special uh, celebration, let's say he's 80 years old or whatever it is. And even when they say things like he's one in a generation, so it, once again, it sounds to us like uh, it's an expression. And, and every, they say, yeah, this one's, a, this one's a, the one in the generation. And this one is one in the generation. So 
וגם בדורות, עולם הגון הרגל צ'ובר היה חד בדורות, לא במליצה ולא בשגרה. The Rugged Shover, and this sounds across the board, people realize he was one in a generation, and it wasn't just an expression. There's nobody like him. It was a unique phenomenon. And the same thing goes for generations before, and he adds after him. This, this mastery of Rukola Torah Kula, it's, it's basic principles, it's details, it's fine details. It's, it's innermost chambers and it's hidden secrets. I would like to share with you five different uh, unique things about the Raghat Trevor. Number one, his, his uh, what we call Hasmana, his, dil- his, his diligence is not enough, his, his uh, concentration. Number two, his mastery of the sources. Number three, what we call his gonus, his, his genius. Um, number four, his, uh, his um, independence. And number five, uh, his unique uh, position as somebody who was uh, uh, a a, a meshiva, uh, uh, somebody writing shilas and shiva, somebody writing writing responsa. So, without further ado, now uh, some of these um, it, th- some of these things are hard to believe, but um, but. It, it could be that the the things people say are are not even appreciating, uh, meaning the 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 complete level that he was. And it sounds like I don't I don't doubt any of this. Um, the the Aderet uh, was uh, Elio. Um, Elio, let's see if I remember Elio David Rabinowitz to Umim. He was the father-in-law of Rav Kook, um, and uh, he writes, "Shkedato atzuma leilot kavayamim lo yanuch v'lo yishkot v'yilmod kol hashasim arambam v'arash shalosh pe'amim b'chol shana." Learns the whole shas with the Rambam three times a year, and the rush. Efshar, that's the that's the adera. Efshar Klal, this is from uh, Rav Yehuda Tzivion, who lived in in Dvinsk, and he knew he he. He got to meet the the Raghat Trevor. It's impossible to describe his his uh, his asmana. He was constantly learning. He literally was not stopping learning. Uh, they they saw uh, there's a Jew. Um, Quoting a Rav Kastelenitz, um, who who said uh, he saw the Raghat Trevor in a shul in Russia or Lita. Again, there was a period of, of the Raghat Trevor's time when he traveled around. One foot was on the bench, and he learned like that for five hours straight with a foot on the bench. <laughs> so he's standing with a foot on the bench. Um, there's a uh, there was an article that was published uh, after the um, the the Rugged Trevor passed away, um, and he writes as follows: Shkedato Shor Rabenu Belimur Torah Aitam Mamash Mafliya. His his uh, his diligence, his persistence, his his uh, his us what we call asmana. That's my best translation. Uh, was amazing. Why I was sick, but Rabbi Meshach Esrim showed me it late. He would learn 20 hours in a, in a, in a 24-hour period. He would learn standing all night. He would learn all night and learn and learn out loud. Focus without letting go of thoughts is, is unique even amongst famous Gaonim. Once in several hundred years, only the Vilna Gon had that kind of uh, focus and concentration. 
in that respect, he was unique in terms of 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 his uh, of his asmara. Now, Bikius. Uh, Bikiut. Now this is back to, now I go back and forth, you'll notice the different print. This is from Rav Zebin once again, and the other material was from the uh, biography that appears in the, uh, in the, um, in the Shilohs and Shuvahs. Bikiut, this is Rav Zebin speaking. Mila regila zo be'etzem ena holemet afilu lahagdarat midat bikiyoto shel agona yachid b'mino azeh. That word doesn't even apply. The, the, the word, uh, a normal Bucky, when you say a guy is Bucky, so he knows by heart a certain amount of the Torah, the Talmud, Habaki Yoter, somebody who's more Bucky, So the, the area that he knows is even greater. Habaki Agadol, the great Bucky, Mistarea Naniach Koach Sichronog, Al Kola Torah, Shemachtav Ubalpeh. So his, his um, memory, it spreads out over all of the Torah, the written Torah, the oral Torah. But that great Bikiyas doesn't yet identify with, with this kind of a genius that we're speaking about. There's a superficial kind of of knowledge where a person doesn't have understanding of all the material. He simply, he has a very good memory. And then, but then there is a Bikiyas that is joined up with genius. And that makes all that knowledge that the person has it, it brings it to life, and it, it creates a deep understanding, sharp logic, and correct explanation. These two kinds of bekiyas, both of those still don't explain the the rugged shepherd. Lo bekiyuta mitzurefed legoni. It wasn't that he had bekiyus, and it was also connected to his uh, geonus. Oops, sorry, my mistake. I don't want to stop this in the middle, so I'm going to go to the original source. Just a moment. Thanks for your patience. Um, yeah, um, you know, I'll share this and then we'll, we'll read in together. Do a different share. Where are we? Here we are. Ella habikiyut gufa higeonit. The bikiyus itself is genius. Bikiyut mafliya u maftiya be mistareitz funotea shel Torah. This wondrous and surprising mastery of the hidden. Aspects of the Torah, he doesn't mean here Nister or Kabbalah, meaning understanding things from the inside. Which reveals to us wide vistas, new, wide and new vistas that we didn't even imagine and we didn't think about. And um, Pearls that shine in places that we never even thought of. When, when the Ruggit Shavu was analyzing some halachic area, 
he breaks it up into his different components. Magdirat kol echad mi'achalakim be'erech mi'uchad. He gives each one uh, its 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 value. Harim mafliu tanu lorak be'etzem anitu achayeg yonim ve'amikori ke'achad. It's not only his original and his uh, logical analysis that surprises us. Elagam bazesh ala kol echad mi'achalakim ve'agdarim u'motzei mi'ad hamon achim te'omim mikol rachavei yam ha'tamur. He finds uh, uh, a common thread in, in, in tons of places all over the Talmud. Habavli are Yushalmi, Mefarshav are Rishonim, and Lisvara Maftia, Shekula Omer Chidush. He'll like say a, a, a surprising Svara that seems to be a, an amazing Chidush. Umoshit, Bemaloch Afnav, Rayot, Vahashvot, Mimamaki Agnazim, Shel Sifra, Vesifri, Umechilta, Vesnea Tamudim. He pulls out hands, hands full of of uh, proofs and comparisons from, from that are hidden in these, these Midrashei Halacha, the Sifra, the Sifri, the Mechilta, the, Bo, the Bavli, the Yerushalmi. V'yamarta bilvavcha miyala de yaseila ve'ela migidel, quoting the Haftorah. And, and you see yourself, where did these come from? Who, who, who raised these? So that's, that's Rav Zevin's poetic description of the Ragged Shepherd's Bikiyas, not just that he knew a lot, not just, not just that he was both a gon and knew a lot, but he seemed to have this uh, inner knowledge, this inner vision of all these sources that were, that were all part of it, seeing things, seeing, connected, seeing connections that, that we wouldn't have seen otherwise. Um, Now, a couple of things uh, that were said um, about his Bikias, about his about his mastery. Um, again, quoting the Adair, again when quoting the Adair, the Adair is that's like um, it's like somebody who's. Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll scratch that. Zichrono v'kiyoto shelo kedera chateva. Bavli, Rishami, Tosefta, Sifra, v'chule, and Marambam. Kach kodeva Rabbeinu achad migdoli abikim medoro hagona aderas besifra over ora. Meaning he speaks about the about the the rugged shover as as having this this unnatural bikiyas. They called him. They said about him. Uh, and this is a again. Every, everybody here he quotes from these uh, uh, biographical sketches. Um, the this Rav Dushavitz, um, and he quotes also. You notice in the footnotes in Chaf Aleph that the Chazanish also spoke glowingly about his Bikiyas. I, I think there is one in English. No, 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 there's something in English now. Um, I, I'll find out the title, but uh, I heard there was something put together in English. Um, now, uh, again, you see the comparison to the Gra. From the days of the Gra, there wasn't somebody like and and you see, they're even writing about the future. It's hard to imagine there will be somebody like that in the in the coming generations. Maybe somebody will surprise everybody, the same way the rugged Trevor surprised everybody. Um, now, Lorak shezacharet asher lamad. It's not only that he remembered what he learned. Elakoma shelamad aichayu mitnaya b'li heref b'mocho akabir. Everything was alive and moving, without stopping. In his massive brain, he didn't have to look up or think about a certain thing. Things were things were in front of him all the time. The 
the Kloisenberger Rebbe, uh, who himself was a, was a tremendous goan. So uh, he said that he met the, the Admor of Ostrovtsa and uh, he said to him, he used the following, he says, he says, the Raga Chavar knew Bavli Yerushalmi and the Rambam more than, better than normal people know Ashray by heart. <laughs> that was the explanation. Now, these are, this was surprising to me. Um, I had heard this as like an exaggeration, but this first thing was quoted by the Raga Chavar himself. So he would travel from Dvinsk to Ragachov. Again, Dvinsk is in Latvia. And even though it borders on uh, Lithuania, uh, modern Belarus is probably, is probably uh, somewhere, was, it was at some point, I think, called Lithuania. So he would travel to Ragachov. He would go over half uh, the Shas. He said that himself. When he goes back, he'll remember the second half. So now, and this is this is the other thing that was stated by Ramir Simcha. Margalab Pumi the Agon Ramir Simcha Vala or Sameh Satali or Sameh, who was the Rav, the the I guess you'd call it the Ashkenazic Rav in uh the Nan Hasidic Rav in, in Dvinsk. So uh, the two of them served together as the Rabbanim of Dvinsk. Each one joked that he was only half a rabbi. So, um, so they, and there was a lot of mutual reverence uh, between them. So he said, It's not true that they say that he, remember, he has a good memory. You don't, you don't call somebody who's right now learning the thing, somebody who's remembering it. He's learning it. It's in front of him, so it's not just something that he recalls. Uh, by the way, the Ragachever and the and and Ramir Simcha would would once a year daven together on Simcha's Torah. Simcha's Torah, which for both of them, the Ragachever was called the Sarah Torah, and Ramir Simcha was called the Sarah Torah, whatever you whatever that means, the master minister. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I I view these people meaning. Of course, the rugged shover worked hard. He learned constantly, um, even though at a very young age, he already knew more than most people alive, and yet he continued to learn constantly. So, um, but uh, these people are, are gifts that Hashem drops down to us. Um, I think he just had an innate ability. It's like a beautiful flower. Uh, or some some like some precious gem, um, but he did work hard, which is which is uh, striking. Um, now, uh, a couple things about his uh, his gaonus, uh, his his genius. Um, one of the things again, you see a little bit of the genius of Rav, Rav Zevin to be able to so you know to sum things up. Um, Number one, uh, the Ragachevar's uh, analysis. So it's well known that Reb Chaim Soloveitchik uh, has a, in a, an educational approach and, a, and a, an analytical approach, which is referred to as Shnei Dinin, where he breaks things up into its, its, uh, its two components and uh, of many uh, difficulties, many problems that might appear in the Rambam or in the Bible or understanding the sources could be solved by saying there's really two dinim, there's really two different aspects of this. So the Rugged uh, in, 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 in quite a few places speaks of three dinim. And so just here's some examples. Um, and then you get a feeling of the kind of analysis that he would do. Again, he doesn't bring all the sources but he here, but he just gives you examples of, of uh, some of the Rugged Chevers, three dinim. Number one, um, Brismilla. So there's the act. There's the aspect of not being an, uh, an RL, not being an uncircumcised person, which itself is an aspect. And then she mahol, that he should be mahol. That's an example. And, and then, And then he goes through 
from many, many different examples of Hilchos Mila, how sometimes only this aspect applies and how some, 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 some things only apply to the act, some things apply to not being an oral, some things apply to, to being a mahu. Um, a get. So there's, there's the existence of this thing called a get, which is a, uh, a, a document that is written lishmo for his sake, for her sake, with all of the dinim. But then there's gerishin, which is divorce itself, what is caused by the get. And then there's raya. Then there's the the get that serves as a as a proof. Um, other issues. Um, there's a din that machalos asuros that unkosher food. Uh, if it's eaten not in the standard way, so then it's uh, it's uh, pater, it's still prohibited to do, but it's uh, it won't there won't be a, a daraisa din. And um, so he says there's three different, but there's three different variations. Sometimes the shalokederech, sometimes doing it abnormally, the prohibition itself doesn't exist. Sometimes it's not considered food, and sometimes, um, even though it still has the iser, and it still is considered food, but it's not an act of eating. Um, other examples, and then once again, he brings many, many, many rayas uh, in order to show where these different three aspects apply. Um, uh, there's another couple here. There's another three. We'll jump down to uh, to uh, Birkas Kohanim. Three aspects of Birkas Kohanim. It's Avoda. It's Kohanim doing Avoda. It's a mitzvah. So I say it's a positive mitzvah, but it's also a bracha. And once again, uh, if you go through that sugya and you go through all the sources that he gets from all over the place, so you'll see that Birkas Kohanim has these three aspects. To it. That's an example of some of his analysis. Here's a... Uh, Here's an example of seeing something in a place that other things, other people would not have seen it. Um, there was somebody asking him if you have to say tefillah saderach on an airplane. So he didn't hesitate for a moment, and he said, it's a gemara in, in Chulin. It says, it's a, there's a parak in Chulin that deals with the mitzvah of Khan Sipur, of, uh, of chasing away the mother bird. Ki karet sipor, sipor lef, kan sipor lefanecha baderech. So it says if you're baderech, if you're on the way, so matza kein bayam, chay b'shiluach. What if you find a, a, a bird's nest on the, on the sea? Meaning floating on the sea is a bird's nest. So you're also chay b'shiluach, hanotein bayam derech, that the, that, that we consider that uh, from that pasuk, you see that there is such a thing as a derech within the sea. I what if matzah kein b'shamayim dichtiv derech nesher b'shamayim? I we see that that we have a pasuk derech nesher b'shamayim, the way of the eagle, or uh, there's another. Uh, I forget nesher might be eagle, might be vulture. I forget. Um, in the heavens, so that's called derech. So the Gemara says, You see, a, there's a, you see a, a, a bird's nest in the air. Derech nesher ikri, derech stamalo ikri. That's derech nesher. That's not just derech. So he says, Haresha ba'avir, no nik rabashim derech. So you see that tefillah sa derech is not shayach in the, in the, in the sky, because that's not considered a derech. Now, so he says, we're not going to leave aside, he says, says Rav Zevin, leave aside the, the practical halachic side. And if you want to argue, you can argue misvara because there's a danger in the in air travel. There are those that say maybe that statistically there's not such a danger. I mean, if something happens, it's, all, it's, it's uh, the chance of it being fatal are super high. Uh, whatever, you can, ding, you can go, like, go back and forth about that. But... Um, this, the, the, this is called tefillah saderach. And you see that there are not, there's not a tefillah that there's a takana to make a tefillah and every time there's danger. There's a takana to make tefillah saderach. Um, so maybe it was only, only uh, instituted as something that can be called derach. 
No matter what, though, just who would have think to look there <laughs> that way? Now, um, the Robert Trevor was extremely independent. Not only doesn't he uh, quote Ahronim, and even famous uh, Ahronim, meaning somebody wrote him and uh, and he said, what you, what you quoted in the name of the Chassim Sofer, believe me, I haven't seen it. What, 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 what do I have to, to look at it? So he, not only that, but he, there's many Rishonim that he doesn't quote. Um, not only that, his approach to Psak is unique. Um, he, he doesn't quote the Shulchan Aruch. And um, there's a, uh, there's a Rav uh, who name, his name is, I think, Moshe Tzvi Weinberg that I heard uh, in one audio shear about the Raga Trevor. And then I saw his sources for another shear, and I saw that he quotes in, the, in a footnote, Rav Avad Yosef has like five or six different posts came to speak about how, on the one hand, the Raga Trevor was this genius, and he was, uh, and, and his insight is, is unparalleled. But, La Halacha, He's not in the maslul. He's not in the path of the of the standard poskim, and uh, and the rove rove of the of the poskim doesn't um, so to speak doesn't paskin like the rugged shepherd, if you will. That's what I that's what I got out of that. Um, I was going to add it to the to the PowerPoint, but uh, it, those are those were very uh, engaging shirim. Uh, at least the one I heard was engaging, and I saw the sources for the second one looked very interesting. Um, again, he he knew the Shulchan Aruch. He had to become a Rav, and he had to get smicha. So uh, when he when the position of Davins came up, so uh, so he so the Rav said, "Listen, you're going to have to learn the Shulchan Aruch. You have to learn be able to to get uh, to get smicha." So he sat down and he learned it. And he said, "Okay, test me on it. I know the whole thing." You know, so of course, somebody like that. Uh, so, but. His derech and psak is uh, Bavli, Rishalmi, Sifra, Sifri, Mechilta, Rashi, Tosfos, and the Rambam, 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 Rambam. So his great, um, his great uh, person was the was was the was the Rambam. Again, he quotes the Kesef Mishnah, uh, but. Um, He quotes others. He mentions uh, the Arizal once uh, they they bring here. Uh, they mention that he mentions the the Maharal, the Chacham Tzvi. He mentions the Gra, Rabbeinu Agrazal, and about the Balatanya. By the way, he writes, and coming from somebody who is as as critical as he. Uh, again, I didn't go into the whole thing about his uh, his uh, some sharp comments that he had. But umit bate bahaflaga viaklal kima koma kom shapasaka gona miti miladizal emet. Almost every place that the true gaon of ladi zal uh, are true. Um, now, um, I just want to mention one other before I mention, and before we close with, uh, with, with the, uh, the Ragachev as a unique posig. I just want to mention that one of the things that is unique about the about the Ragachover is to adapt to see the Morin of Vuchim and the Mishnah Torah as as united books. Um, most people, Lamdanim, they learn the Mishnah Torah, they just don't learn the Morin of Vuchim. Many people who are involved in Jewish philosophy, they learn the Morin of Vuchim and they don't necessarily learn the Mishnah Torah. And then there are people who have great bikiyas and they learn they they learn all the different farms. So they'll learn the Morna book and they'll learn the Rambam. And so they'll see these are two different books that the that the, the Rambam both wrote. This is his book on halacha, and this is his book on uh, Jewish thought, uh, Jewish philosophy, whatever you want to call that. But the Mrugachover has <coughs> explanations of the Mishnah Torah based on concepts and categories that appear in the Mornavukim. 
This is a whole different world. There's a book called Mifaneach Tzunot, which is written by Reb Nachum Mendel Kasher, which uh, explores this side of the Ragachama, of understanding uh, the Mishnah Torah based on uh, ideas and categories that appear in the Mordevuchim. Um, that itself is a very interesting um, realm. Now, one last thing I wanted to share with you tonight, and that is the Rugged Trevor as, as somebody who was involved in response. This, I, these pictures appear on auction sites. Uh, these are examples of uh, postcards that the Rugged Trevor sent to people who sent them Shilas and Chuvas from all over the world. Um, literally, tens of thousands of Chuvas. Um, the Rugged River himself says, Ki Thousands of them are all over. It doesn't say how many thousands of them. Rav Pinch, Mordechai Pinchas Taitz Zal, who became the Rav of Elizabeth, New Jersey. So when he was young, his father was, was, in, was connected with the uh, Rugged River, and so he visited him, and he writes, as far as his calculation is that the Rugged River wrote between 40 and 50,000 shuvas. Um, he remembered the ones that he wrote, the person who asked, the question he asked, the time and the contents. And uh, y- you see, this is, this is true. The Rugged River wrote a shuva to somebody named Rav Getzel, who was the Rav of, of, of Biachov, uh, the old Biachov. And at the end he wrote, I already wrote this to you 35 years ago or 36 years ago with regards to, to the get of Dubrovna. And uh, he says, and similarly, what you wrote about the Yerushalmi Sanhedrin, I wrote you this 15 years ago. So he, he remembered everything. Uh, um, he says, um, he writes, now this is interesting. The rugged of his writing style is legend that he writes, says, you know, look here, 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 look here. Rav Zevin writes, and I saw this, ugh, I forget where else I saw this expressed, that the rugged Chover verbally was a tremendous Balmazbir, meaning he was, he could explain the way they express it. He could explain difficult concepts to a child. And he explained things extreme, verbally he was extremely clear and uh, and in writing, he was extremely cryptic. We're left, though, with the in writing part. Um, he would get Shilas from all over the world. And one day, he got a package. The package of, of Shilas was so big that the uh, postman wasn't able to fit it into the post box. And he left it on the, he had to leave it on the, on the ledge. And says Rav Taitz, he got to the Rugged Trevor's house. He picked up the, the pile. There were 16 letters and six postcards, folded postcards. He sat down on his table. And after an hour and a half, he had written all, all of the chubas and they were ready to be sent out. Um, now, the Rabbeinu Ra'at Ikar, the bottom of this page, Rabbeinu Ra'at Ikar Limudoba Ma'anet Shuvot L'chol the main part of his learning was responding to all people that, that want to learn from him. Do not withhold from writing and asking me questions. This is the main Torah. And I very much like this. And uh, he wrote... Uh, uh, he says... And so somebody says he doesn't want to... Uh, somebody said, maybe you didn't want to respond to me. He says, I very much enjoyed when um, when people write me halacha and I answer. So uh, that was that was the beginning of the of the rugged shover. Next time, God willing, I would like to um, do something from the rugged shover on Chumash. And then get something of his of his uh, drush and agadita and his insights into uh, into into chumash. 
So um, that's what I wanted to share with you today.